Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are going to be setting some posts. This is going to be for a garden fence. It's gonna be for a, kind of a ranch style fence, I think is what we've settled on. But today we're just getting all the posts in. But I'm gonna go through all about setting posts. So whether you're doing this for a deck or a fence or something that needs to hold weight, a, you know, a footing for a, a building or a shed or, or something like that, we're gonna go through everything you need to know about putting a post in the ground for any purpose. So let me show you what we're gonna be doing here today in the garden behind me. And I will show you some of the tools that we have to get started and then we'll get some posts in the ground. So we have a garden here that is about 55 feet long by about 32 feet. Now there's a little corner cut off there, but if you square it off, it's, it's 32 feet. Eventually these will be connected by two by fours or two by sixes, depending on cost. Same process that we would use to put in a private six foot privacy fence. So if you're looking to do a six foot privacy fence, this is gonna be, you know, the posts and everything is gonna be the same, same process for setting the posts. If you are gonna be setting a post for a fence, you, you're not putting downward pressure on the post. The post is not meant to hold up, let's say, the weight of a deck or of a shed or some kind of, you know, structure. Uh, and so you don't need a footing. You don't really need to put anything in the bottom of the hole, cement or a pad or, or pea gravel or anything like that. If you are doing a deck, you would need to, depending on your code in your area, use some kind of a footing. You have to have some kind of solid uh, foundation for that post to set on. Uh, so you can dig your holes uh, 12 inches below the frost line and fill it with cement to let that harden and then set your post on that and backfill dirt around it. Uh, you can do that. Uh, some uh, states and counties will allow a, a little, they call it a, a disc or a biscuit. Uh, it's a basically a thick patio stone that's uh, the size of the hole, and you would just drop that down into the bottom of the hole. Uh, some counties and states will allow for pea gravel. Pea gravel compacts very well, and it also drains, and so uh, you can dig your hole you know, uh, 12 inches below the frost line and fill it with pea gravel and set your post on top of that pea gravel, compact it down and then backfill with dirt. All the posts that we're putting in here today are just for a fence. So they just need to be stable side to side. And you don't really, I mean, you, you can definitely go below the frost line in your area, uh, but for fencing, it's not that big. Heave is not as much of a problem. So for fence posts, for farm fencing, all that kind of stuff, we're gonna dig a hole. We're gonna get our post set in there. We're gonna get it level and straight, level and plumb, and, uh, and make sure it's in line with everything. I'm gonna show you how to lay things out. And, uh, and we're gonna backfill it with dirt and compact it down, and we're done. A couple things that are gonna be helpful. A string line, uh, this one comes on a reel. They make these reels for kite string, and so you can actually buy uh, string separately and buy a kite reel. Uh, some of the kite reels are actually really nice for this. Um, this one, I believe, came on this uh, this reel. And I'll put a link in, in uh, the description on Amazon for this stuff. And then I do have one of these longer tape measures. Uh, this one goes out to, I think, 100 feet. Uh, that's going to be helpful if you're doing a long fencing. But uh, generally, you can use a smaller tape measure uh, if you just need to measure in between posts. And, of course, you have three choices on how to dig your hole. Of course, you can use a good old-fashioned post hole digger. It's not a lot of fun. Definitely will take you a lot longer with a lot more effort. But you're gonna to wanna to have one of these handy anyway just to clean up the hole, no matter what you use. You can get one of these. This is a one-person handheld post hole digger. This one is from uh, Garden Tracks. This is a site that actually uh, a company actually found earlier this summer, and they have a lot of great, uh, great equipment. This is uh, fairly new. It's a two-stroke engine. I believe this is a 52cc model. The auger is an eight-inch auger. And this one has a, a special clutch on it, which I'm gonna show you in action, which is amazing. This makes all the difference when using these, especially if you're digging a lot of post holes. That's gonna save your, your body from being beat up by this thing. You can also get extensions if you need to dig deeper holes. This is plenty for what we have or what we're doing here. And you can also get bigger augers. I also have a 12 inch auger for this, which is good for a six by six post. For our four by four posts, we're just gonna use the eight inch auger. That gives us plenty of wiggle room on each side of our hole. And so this is usually the, the right size for your four by four post. Your third option, which I have done before also, when I built a pool in a retaining wall, I needed to go super deep. I think I went 52 inches on a lot of them or 55 inches. And you can actually rent sometimes from Home Depot or other places, if you tow it, it's a towable post hole digger. It has a counterweight, the engine is the counterweight on it and it pivots over the axle. And so the, the actual auger hangs down from the far side of it. And you literally just line that auger up with your hole and you set it on the ground. You, you stand on the other end of it, you fire up the engine and you just, just work your, work your uh, 
uh, work the lever basically, and the, the whole thing just digs, the, it pivots over the axle and it just digs the, the post hole in the ground. It's super easy. But for today, we're gonna use the uh, Garden Tracks uh, post hole digger. The first thing you wanna do is set your corner post. So I'm gonna set a corner post right here, and I'm gonna set a corner post right there, and then we're gonna get a string line between them, and then everything in between is gonna match up right to that string line so everything is perfectly straight. So I just have the, the post uh, loosely put in here. I just kicked a little bit of dirt uh, around the bottom just to kind of hold it in place. And this is another handy little little tool to have. It has a rubber band that comes with it. This is gonna just speed up the process of making sure everything is uh, plumb, making sure that it is straight up and down. And so you've got a level on this side, you've got one on this side, and you've got one here. Uh, this obviously is not going to be useful for what we're doing today, but these two will be. And we don't need it to be perfect, but let's get it close, and then we'll keep kicking dirt in around the bottom of the post. Since the amount of dirt that we took out of the hole, minus the volume of the post that's now in there, we should have extra dirt. And so it's nice to kind of scrape the, the extra dirt up to the edge of the post and make a little bit of a crown. This is just gonna help shed water away from sit running right down and sitting at the bottom of that post. That'll help with frost heave also. Sometimes I'll use the shovel handle. So if you want to kind of make sure that you don't have any voids along your your post, just use that shovel handle and fill in that space and then just keep bringing more dirt up to the edge. And as you do this, you wanna keep checking your level. Now my next post is gonna be all the way down at the other end. Depending on where you live, you're going to encounter different types of soil. Uh, here we have <laughs> kind of a mix. Uh, this is very sandy and rocky. We also have a lot of trees, and I have a feeling once I get up there, I'm going to get a lot of roots and things. So I told you earlier that this is going to save you a lot of uh, <laughs> a lot of beat up on your body, and basically it's a spring clutch. And so one of the the things that I, I struggled with the first time I used one of these, it did not have this. Uh, is that uh, you hit a rock. I mean, you get this thing spinning, you hit a rock, and this thing will, it, it will completely throw you right around it on the ground. I mean, there's no, no give to this thing. It's got a lot of torque. It's got a heavy gearbox in here. And once that thing is get, gets going, it's, it doesn't stop real, so real quick. So you'll see, it jerked me around a little bit, but uh, it's, it's very, very controllable because of this. This gives you an extra couple seconds to let off that trigger. So once this thing, this thing will stop, and this will, uh, it'll, it'll give you a lot more tension. You'll start to feel it and you can let off the trigger, let off the gas. It gives you, you know, the, the couple extra seconds to do that. And so you can uh, manage a lot better. It, it gives you, it's a much smoother uh, bore when you're, when you're taking, the, taking this in and out. If this were gonna be a load bearing post of a deck or something, uh, I would have to go below the frost line and my footing would have to be below that. And so here in Michigan, that's about 42 inches is what they usually recommend. 
and I usually put the footing below the 42 inches and then the post sits on top of that footing. So this is, uh, this is not deep enough for that, but if you are looking to get one of these, you can get an extension with it and you can go deeper. The old post hole digger is still handy though. Once you hit a rock or root, you gotta bust the old post hole digger back out and just kind of fish those things out. With the post hole digger, setting each one of these fence posts at 32 inches completely plumb, it takes me about four or five minutes each. So I'm gonna run a string line now between the two and I'm gonna put two in the middle because I'm gonna have a gate here eventually. Uh, there will be more posts that I will set in between this uh, at a later time, but right now I'm just getting the main ones in. Let's pretend this is our post. So if you wanna, this is a tomato steak, it's not a post, but let's pretend it was. This is uh, how you run a string line like a pro. So I've got a, a little bit of, a, of the string line here. It's about a foot long section. I'm just gonna spring this out a little bit. So I'm gonna wrap around the back of the post. So I wanna run my string line this way. So it's gonna run this way. So I've got my, my long side in my right hand and the short side in my left hand. You put it around the back of the post. You're gonna take the short side around and then you're gonna take your, the long side that you want and you're gonna just loosely put that around. Now that locks this in. It wrapped around itself and now this can't, can't move at all. But you can, you can actually pull it tight this way. So I can actually pull more through and then when I try to pull it this way, of course now my stake's loose. Uh, it won't go anywhere. So we'll do that on our post and we'll, uh, we'll run the string line. Oh, they're not the same height. Well, that doesn't matter. So I'm not measuring the whole depth perfectly. I'm not worried about that because I'm gonna set them around 32 inches. We'll just throw them in there uh, when I'm close to that. And then we're gonna come back. Once I put my, my uh, pieces, the, the runners between the fence here, uh, I'll come back and I'll lop the tops off of these uh, however I want to. So the gate here, I want those to be level. So I'll just measure, uh, you know, put a level across the top of these and I'll cut, cut them both exactly level. This also brings up another point. How do you deal with a slope? There's two different main ways to deal with a slope. So my next fence post is gonna go eight feet from here and I can run a stringer from a little bit lower on this one over to the top of that one. And that will be a perfectly level and then I can run another stringer between the bottom. That's how I'm gonna do this particular fence. And then I can step down and run a little bit lower on the next post over to the next post. So I can step my fence down to the lower spot, which is down here. Or if you're doing a privacy fence, I've done a whole video on this, you can just run your stringers on a little bit of an angle. And then you can just run your individual pickets right on the ground and your fence will just slope and, and follow the contour of the ground. That's another way to do it. Either way is fine. It's whatever you like best and whatever you think will look best. What's the difference between plumb and level? Well, this post, we are talking about plumbness. Is that a word? I don't know. Fence posts and walls and other vertical things, they are need to be plumb. This actually uh, will do either way. So if you are using a four by, on a four by four that's running horizontally, it would be, you'd use this uh, level right here and that would be level. So things that are horizontal, you are measuring the levelness and things that are vertical, you are measuring the plumbness. This is right where I wanted that post hole to be. Now I know why it was so hard to dig. Well, we've got our corner posts in and we've got all of our gate posts in. So these are four foot gates and the one over there is a three foot gate. That'll be just a, a walking gate or a wheelbarrow gate. This one will actually fit the golf cart and uh, 
and cart through. These posts are gonna be connected with wood. So this post is gonna help support that post and there's not gonna be solid pickets here. So there's not gonna be a wind pressure uh, back and forth. Now, if you were doing a privacy fence where you were putting you know, pickets across this, so you got a lot of wind force that could be blowing on this, wiggling back and forth and that, it wouldn't hurt to throw some cement in these holes. Uh, you can just put dry cement in there, mix it in with the soil and just let it sit, spray it down with the hose or just let the rain uh, harden it up and that, that will work also so you don't have to mix cement. Of course it does work best if you mix it and pour it in around the hole. Lots more work to do with the garden fence but hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, stopping by today for uh, some tips and tricks on setting posts. Hopefully helped you out in some way or at least you enjoyed just watching me put posts in the ground I guess. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed and as always guys thanks for watching. Have a good one.